Hey, what's up, Buffalo? It's your girl Chantel, better known as Miss Recycle. I'm standing here today in front of the L. Bethel Assembly, now known as the Michigan Street Baptist Church. 511 Michigan Street. This is a monument that has been overlooked. A lot of people in our society don't even know that this place exists. This is actually one of the places that the slaves traveled to for the Underground Railroad. Um, civil rights movement started here, a whole bunch of other things. But I just wanted to come here today just to kind of give my people a little bit of information as to um, where they live, what they come from, and exactly what happened here. Most people don't know. So, you ready? Let's go. Now, as you see, Michigan Street Baptist Church, site of an Underground Railroad station. So now, they're telling you right now, before the Civil War, escaping slaves were hidden in a concealed area in the basement of this church until they could escape from freedom, until they could escape to freedom, excuse me, to Canada. So now, this was a place where, this was like their resting place, where they came to just kind of gather their thoughts, get themselves together to continue their journey. Now, right here is the gentleman who actually helped build the church, and his name is Reverend Samuel H. Davis. And it says that he both built the church and ministered to the congregation as well. He was actually buried in the British American Institute Cemetery, part of the Uncle Tom's cabin. How about that? Wow. Okay, so now this is a little bit of our black history. Um, right across the street from here is a colored musicians club museum. Now this is where the quote unquote colored people would come and play their music. So this is a lot of, um, this is a place where a lot of the jazz musicians and things like that came to do their thing. And this was a big thing back in the day. Um, now what we're gonna do is just take a walk down here. Um, I just wanna kinda give you a feel of my vibe. Now when I first came to this area, you know, as you look along the street, you'll see some footprints. These footprints are right in front of me. Now, as I walked up the street, I saw these footprints and I'm like, wow. You know, it says Underground Railroad, Buffalo, New York. And it was just so intriguing to me as to how I looked down and I just saw the feet. So it just made me, I was overwhelmed and compelled to just stand on them. Like a burst of energy. It's like once you come here and put your feet on the same footprints that your ancestors travel, this is like, this is history in the making, okay? But for me, it did something. To me, it ignited something in my body. Like when I stepped on this, like like right now, I just feel a burst of energy in my body just telling me to fight. Our ancestors is talking to us. They're calling on us to do the right thing. So now what I want to do is take you around here and show you some of the plaques. Plaques that have a lot of information regarding what went on here, um, who, uh, the people were who traveled through here. There was a lot of people who came. Um, W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass traveled through here, Marcus Garvey, um, as you know, Harriet Tubman, of course. But um, there's a history that has been written about this city that most people don't know about. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of it with you, but I will go through it vaguely. See, look, here's another, another footprint. And if you look up the street, it goes all the way down the street, it's like, they're, they're leading people, guiding people here, but for some reason, people walk down the street and don't even notice it. They overlook it. They're actually traveling the path that your ancestors took to freedom. This is the path that they took to freedom. And as you see, the compass is pointing north. North. North is their way to freedom, okay? That's A toward the Peace things. Bridge as well. Exactly. Canada. Canada. Exactly. And that's where they went. They actually swam across the foot of ferry to get to Canada. Now these people, they had it mapped out. They strategically, okay, strategically figured out a way to get to their freedom by any means necessary. Walk, crawl, swim. They got there. Now, our first plaque is about the melting pot. Um, you see Mother Moses is what they call her. 
Harriet Tubman. They give you a little brief information about her, about the African Americans, and it tells you here the history. Now, let's just go through this. The history started with the African Americans. They came here in the 1800s. And they tell you the Jews came here in 1847. The Chinese got here in 1904. So, by the information that you see right here, it tells you that the African American people were here in Buffalo first. And it also states here that in 1790, a black man by the name of Joseph Hodge had a trading post here. So, he was actually, the, he established Buffalo. He was one of the people who actually established Buffalo, New York. Now this is all in our um, history books. Which ones? I couldn't tell you, but I know for sure it's on our plaque right here in Buffalo, New York. So, man, whenever you come to town, come on down. Arsenal and Michigan Street is where the plaques start and it goes all the way around to Nash Street. And Nash Street is where they actually have the Nash House because Mr. Nash contributed to, he played a big part in um, this church. And he also had a clinic, the Jesse Nash Clinic. So he contributed a lot of things to this. Community as well, as a politician community. for the exactly. people. That's right. Now, moving north, they explain um, basically their travels, what they went through. Look at this. You have men who were sharp, dressed in suits every day, had nice cars, Buffalo, cars, New cabs. York. Buffalo, New York. This was the Brown Bomber Cab Company, okay? An African-American, excuse me, a melanated community who had things, who had things. They were established until someone came along and took it, destroyed it. But we're gonna move on. Now it also gives you the breakdown of a dentist by the name of Alicia A. Gilbert. Okay, an African American dentist. Or is that Elijah? Elijah. I'm sorry, that's Elijah. Elijah. Okay, a little hard on the hotel nightclub. They had a nightclub here. Buffalo, New York was far away from the oppressive Jim Crow laws of segregation that emerged following reconstruction in the South. Mm-hmm. What? So that means those things didn't affect us back then. We had so much fun, we lived, we enjoyed life. Wow, Little Harlem Hotel Nightclub. Right, we enjoyed life, we yeah. enjoyed life. You know, sometimes it's sad to say, but people don't wanna see people happy. So now when they look over the fence and they see a, gr a group of people laughing and having fun and enjoying themselves, they say, no, we don't want that. We're not happy, so they can't be happy. No, we're not going to allow that. No one will control our destiny. And that's just the bottom line. So now what I'm doing right now is just walking around to the actual Nash house. Um, they have a plaque in front of the house. They also do tours. Um, they have the schedule over there too. We'll actually check it out and see what days we can possibly get together as a group, come out and do a tour of this establishment. I want as many people as possible to know about our history because I feel as though it's very important for us to know who we are in order for us to know where we're going. So we have to know where we come from, who we come from. And to know that you come from greatness will cause you to do some great things. So if you don't know that you're a part of greatness, then of course you won't strive to be great. So now, right here is the Nash House. As you see, it's on the corner of Nash and Arsenal. This is the Nash House, 36 Nash. If you come here, they just actually fixed it up not too long ago. It'll give you a um, brief description about the Nash House. Um, Reverend J. Edward Nash, 1868 to 1957, and his wife, Frances Jackson Nash, from 1895 to 1987. <laughs> they purchased this home in the 1900s, and the neighbors redeveloped it in 1926. Um, this was the house that um, I actually saw homeless people. You know, sometimes I come up here, I see homeless people actually sleeping outside on these stairs and along this ramp here. Now, if you follow me very quickly, I just want to give you a tour of the rest of the plaques. 
briefly you have Mr. Nash. They give you a brief description of him and the big role that he played in the establishing of shaping the black community. Shaping the black community. Um, Michigan Avenue, YMCA. Um, they did a lot of great things. He did a lot of great things for the community. Now as we go forth, you have the charting of the future and it basically gives you a breakdown of the Niagara movement. Now this is what I wanted to talk about. The Niagara movement was a movement that was created by the people and they wanted to utilize the energy coming from Niagara Falls to enlighten or um, incite the people, okay? To ignite the people. So now, they created a movement, an underground movement, where they would have these secret meetings. And from the Niagara movement led to the Civil Rights Movement. And the Civil Rights Movement led to the creation of the NAACP that you now know today. So what I'm saying is, is it all started here, people. It all started right here in Buffalo, New York. So now what I'm trying to also let you know is, is if you stand for nothing, you're bound to fall for anything. So we see it's written in history that our people was not willing to allow our children to continue to be lynched out in the streets. They had to do something about it. So they strategically figured out a plan to come together and fix the situation. Now, no, the situation has not been totally fixed. They opened up the doors for us to bring forth a solution. So now it's our jobs to continue where they left off. Now, as you look around, you will see a couple of more plaques out here. The other one is actually uh, Harriet Tubman. I mean, I'm sorry. Mary Talbert. 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 How her name? <laughs> the know, other one is actually go. Mary Talbert. Yeah, this is. And if you go. look, some say I even favor her. But she's the one who actually drew my attention and, and drew, her energy drew me here. Actually, I ended up going to her gravesite and I um, took my bird who actually died that day. The same day I went to go visit her at her gravesite, I, my bird died. So I took my bird there and I buried my bird right there with her. So if you guys ever go visit Miss Mary Talbert at Forest Lawn Cemetery, you might see a little white box in front of her tombstone. That's my bird. And I'm fortunate enough I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, actually, with um, the things that I've been coming across, with, with all the information that I've been able to obtain, but the energy source that I get when I come here, it's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. But it's something about her. She, she, she inspired me. Um, she created the anti-lynching movement. And that was because when she came here, she wasn't even from Buffalo, okay? When she came here, she discovered that these people were basically being lynched. They were disenfranchised. And she had to do something about it, even though she wasn't from here and she didn't know anybody but her husband who brought her here. She put a plan together to stop the government or the officials, the people, powers that be, from lynching these black people. So she also created a movement the, national, the, the colored women's movement. It was the Phyllis Wheatley Club, um, an affiliate of the National Association of Colored Women's Club. And this was the club that she put together. She had 13 women, and those 13 women basically all played a, a, a major part in the movement. She got this movement together because she knew that she needed women at the forefront to basically kind of cater to the community, cater to the powers that be to, you know, because sometimes they say, quote unquote, a woman can kind of get things done a little better or more than a man. No offense to my men, but sometimes, you know, we come in with that motherly approach. We come in with that, we, we come in with a fierce, nice, nasty type attitude. 